load this trailer up for the wood boiler. So this deck over doesn't get used in the winter and it's kind of got the unwritten rule that we don't pull it in the slush. We got one other trailer for that for snow removal, you know, the salt wrecks everything. So it works out good. You know, the boiler takes bigger chunks of wood. And so having this like waist high saves your back. They're about waist high, you grab these big chunks, you don't have to bend. And then these gates are off of an old flatbed that I parted out years ago. So they work good. You just stick them in the side back that's down by the boiler. Got some plastic down on the bed because all this snow and stuff, it, it melts down, you know, as it gets sunny. And, and then you can just kind of chip the ice off, clean it off as needed. Save as much handling as you can. make a little video about uh, splitting wood here we got the traditional wood splitters and then dad made one that comes down from the top for the really big stuff so you can sit in the cab and you don't have to sit and wrestle the stuff we have a tree trimmer down the road that drops wood off the stuff he doesn't need so we got some stuff that's like this is up to my chest really big stuff but besides going out into the woods big guys without coming out and wrestling it on the slippery snow. And when you're done you just grab your rock bucket, scoop the stuff up, put it in the pile, and you got nice big chunks for the wood boiler. Do a quick look at this. This is a big I-beam. Came from a steel place down in the cities. He welded a wedge on the end of it and an end plate. Got a flat piece on the ram, built a slide, it's homemade. So we'll do a little overview. I know this is the season for the wood boilers. I see a lot of the homesteaders and farm guys kind of do these. This is a heat master um, size for 10,000 square feet. Fan box, rocker grades. I'll put a little clip in of how to empty the ash pan on this. So that's a wood trailer. 
It's about the right waist height. You don't have to bend down. So we typically load that with a bobcat. And uh, there you have it. So this thing serves two sheds in the house. So I'll do a little overview of how the water works and each one's work and how we're able to burn very little gas over the winter. So the rocker grates empty into an ash can so you don't have to shove them out. Have another back saving device for picking heavy logs off. Kind of balances out. You can go in, scoop, open your door, and slide them in. So this will take three foot? 56 inch. 56 inch max. So you can get some big logs in there. This is probably the biggest load for that wood boiler. This shop's 54 feet long, all in floor heat, six zones. Keep it at about 50 to 55 degrees year round. As, as the thermostat needs it, it just kicks the solenoid valve and pump on, circulates it. And then from here, that piping shoots over into the next middle sized shed. Here in the middle shed, you can see this is a Sterling natural gas unit heater. Retrofitted a three pass hot water coil in front of it. So basically the gas is turned off on this. Oh, just heard the fan kick off. And what this does is the thermostat will just cycle the fan on and off and blow through the coil till it's satisfied. And this, for, this shed's usually just kept above freezing. So most of the time, if you're not going in and out of here or opening the door, this will just act like a radiator, you know, like in an old house and just keeps it above freezing and that fan doesn't cycle much at all. And this shed's about 26 by 40. And here's the waterworks in the house. So you get your hot water line coming in from the boiler loop. Comes down, runs through a additional pump. Then it goes up into a plate exchanger. What this plate exchanger does is it replaces the water heater in the winter time. So you have your, this is in series with the cold water that goes into the tank. So you shut the gas off you're not running this appliance in the winter time or whenever the boiler's running. And that will run a continuous instant amount of hot water. And then on the output side of that plate exchanger, the hot water continues through after it's used there into a coil, like drops into the plenum of the furnace. And then you can cycle your fan and run your air through there instead of burning gas and then that returns back out to the loop into the other shed or the main shed. And there's also another loop on here with this pump that pulls hot water from this into the in-floor heat onto one side of the house for the addition. So anytime your boiler's running, the only appliance in this house that consumes gas is uh, the dryer. So you've got continuous amount of hot water, never run out. Works pretty good. Well, that's our little overview. You can save a lot of money heating with wood if you're willing to do the work, because I don't know what it would take to run the in-floor in that shop on gas, or this shop, or the house. This runs like when it gets colder temps, 150 to 165. Kind of like a trip and reset dead band. Then it'll, it'll run up to 165, trip off, and then drop down to 150. The, the fan box on it. And a trailer wood like that in weather, you know, 20 teens, more mild the last two weeks. But if it, we have a big snap of uh, sustained 10 below cold weather, I mean, he's burnt up as much as a trailer of that in eight days and a real bad cold snap, so. Later.